Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet everyone today in the precious, wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're just thanking and loving and praising Him for what He's done and what He has revealed to us. Uh, it is just, uh, I would say that it is just tremendous when we uh, catch the revelation and we actually realize what Christ has done in uh, this day. And it, and it really, he said, you know, um, the, the generation. So what, what he done, it was in a generation past. And, and then here we are uh, in the next generation. And we're just, we're just catching up and finally catching on to what really, really happened. Uh, and it is just amazing uh, to see the people just stagger and stumble along and uh, just everything uh, that he has so manifested and proven beyond any shadow of a doubt or anything, and they just stagger on in darkness and looking for uh, all things to come. But uh, we believe that God has fulfilled His Word. He's fulfilled it, and He's let us see that He's fulfilled it. And then our part is, is to be His body on this earth to tell, to witness what He has done. And so uh, that's all we can do. And people say, well, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? Well, maybe that's not my calling. <laughs> that's not my calling. My calling is, it's in to prophesy again the things that was in the open book. And I don't know what people think the open book, the open book was the Bible. There's only, there's only one book and it's the Bible. So, uh, it's, but evidently it's going to be that way and so all we can do is, is just continue to testify what the Lord has done. And that's what we're going to do again today. And uh, I've uh, chosen uh, a title for this, uh, Christ the Head. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again today. Lord, it's such a wonderful uh, as it said, there'd be a, a terrible and a great day. Well, Lord, all we got to do is look around. There's a ter terrible day outside of this. But Lord, we're in, we're in the great day. We're in the day that, that you come on the scene. And Lord, you come on the scene by way of being the head to the body, to, to manifest yourself on this earth, not just not just one member, but a many-membered body, the wife of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we, we so thank you that, that you have made us a part of that. Lord, as you are the Word, we are the Word, you are the Word manifested, we're the Word manifested, and it's all about Jesus Christ because he is the word and this is a word body so lord we thank you for that we thank you lord for our position in christ and we pray the, today that you would continue to open and reveal and let us testify of the great things that you have done we'll give you the praise in jesus name amen so like i said uh the message is going to be called Christ Ahead, and you'll see why that I've chosen that in a minute. And I wanted to <clears throat> tell everybody that uh, July is uh, my birth month. And, of course, I just had a birthday. And uh, the Lord has allowed me to be here uh, 770 
I just turned 78, so he's allowed me to be here all these years. And uh, so you just have to thank the Lord that uh, your life, he knew all about it. He knew exactly where you were, and he, and he knew exactly what he had to do uh, to, to get you. And he got me. He never, I just run wild for the first part of my life, probably the first 35 years. And, and the Lord never even bothered me at all. And then all of a sudden, one day, it was, he tapped me and it was my, my time to make the choice. And I made the choice that I was going to serve him. So, and I have for these past number of years. And I praise God that I will continue to serve him all the days of my life, the, the days that he allows me to be on this earth. So, this life, once you receive Christ, it is all about Christ. Because you know it's no longer, it's no longer you, it's, it's him. Everything is about him. Everything we do, it's about him. So, we're so glad to be a part of that. And that God has, has I'm just going to say this, God has miraculously taken us and cleansed us that we are his pure virgin bride. And there's not one thing held against us. And so when the devil comes to knock on and he said, well, you done this and you done that. And I said, tell him, no, I didn't. No, no, no. The one that didn't, all those things, he has been done away with. That old nature, that old soul, the one that was permitted for me to be born with, that one is gone. It's completely been annihilated and done away with and never to be remembered anymore. But does that mean that he's going to just go away and leave you alone? No. He's going to continue to knock and knock and knock. But the thing to do is don't open the door. Do not listen to him because he is a liar. Amen. Now, well, I'm going to read uh, a couple of places. And I'm going to read in... Genesis 3.16, and you'll see why I'm reading these places as we go along. But Genesis 3.16, and then I'm going to read in Ephesians 5.21 down to verse uh, 32. And so we can get started. So if you want to uh, read along with us, you can turn to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16, and then Ephesians 5. So... Uh, let's start. Genesis 3.16 Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And you say, what are you talking about? Well, once <clears throat> we'll just put it like once they got messed up in the garden and yeah, Eve listened to the serpent did what she did and then she gave it to Adam and he did what he did then uh, God had to have a, a meeting with them and the judgment was meted out and that's when he, he turned uh, the beast the serpent that was almost like a man so much close that his seed would mix with a woman he turned him he cursed him and turned him into a crawling, as we call today, a snake, a serpent. And so this, he's, he's given the, the woman this because she had done that. And so Brother Adam tells us, especially in the marriage and divorce uh, uh, message, that before that, the man and the woman was in the garden and they were co-equal. Well... Now they're not co-equal anymore because of that. And he said, And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over me. So that's God's word, and I don't care what anybody says. He don't change his mind about his word. I don't care if we into the New Testament or whatever. It's still old and true. 
Now, let's read Ephesians 5, 21 down through. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's what? Submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Because now he's going to send the sanctify and cleanse this church. And I, I put on here how? With the washing of the water by the word. He's going to cleanse his church by the washing of the water by the word. No, now you're not going to add nothing to that. You're not going to put no creeds, no dogmas, no traditions. He's going to cleanse the church by the word. That he might, and I'm going to ask another question here, getting down to verse 27. Why? Why was, why was he going to do this washing? Well, he gives us the answer. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, that, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is what the washing is going to do. It's going to be holy without blemish. So are men to love their wives as their own bodies, that he that loveth his wife loveth himself. Wow, the two are one. How could, how could you say, well, me and my wife are one, and then you, you would take care of your own body, right? Sure, that's... that's only makes sense. But see, people get these things separated. And when you do that, you're in trouble. Now, for as, for no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it even as the Lord the church. Well, that's pretty good. Because God is taking care of His church. He's, he's looking out for the church. Everything he can do for this, he's going to do it. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. And Brother Brown said we're, we're all of that and we're spirit of his spirit. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So look here. He went through this whole thing about a man and a wife and, and all about it. And he comes right down to the whole thing and the whole fact is this, I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now there has to be a, a, a natural to be a spiritual. Brother Brown said it has to be a negative to get to the positive. And so, this, what we're doing down here in the natural is what God is doing in the spiritual. And some people, they, they, they get it confused one to the other, but there's no confusion. This here, this relationship between the husband and the wife is the same relationship between us, the wife of Christ, and Christ. But this one down here is a temporal relationship. This one over here is an eternal relationship. And so that's what he's trying to get the people to see. If you can see, if you can see the one over here, just flip it over here on the spiritual side and it'll be the same way. Because, look at here. He's going to have a church. 
And it's going to be without spot, wrinkle, blemish, and it's going to be holy and without blame. And he is able to, he is able to do that. Now, yeah. so we want to look at this as as a natural and as a spiritual type, because we're going to see as we read some of these statements Brother Brown has made just. What a beautiful picture this is. Because he's got, a, he's got an example here on earth, and here he's working to the real thing over here on this side, on the spiritual side. And this is how that he does these things. Brother Brown said it's, it's, it's types and shadows. Well, this, this natural here is just a type of the spiritual. But some people, they want to run off with, with the type. It's, it's not, it's not the, the real thing. It's, it's a type pointing us to the real thing. Now, I saw this uh, quote the other day, and I thought to myself, well, man, if this ain't the absolute truth, I've never seen it. And somebody said, well, what are you talking about? I said, do you, do you ever, uh, well, yeah, I guess you can't hardly read a newspaper no more. Nobody's got one. But there's all, all kind of news sites on the Internet and everywhere else. And, and, and even our local news here, it just shows that the people have lost their minds. I mean, the crazy things they do, phew, could you imagine somebody just pick up a gun and just go to spray on a crowd with it? You tell me that's not crazy? And that, that don't happen just one time. It happens regular over here. But Brother Brown made this statement in the little message, and knoweth it not there in Jeffersonville. He said, let me prophesy something to you just before it comes to pass. The whole world is grouping in insanity. Insanity. The whole world, not just a spot, but the whole world. And you see it, it's, it's not only here, it's around the world. And we'll get worse and worse and worse until there'll be a bunch of maniacs. Well, hello. I mean, even now, when you're when you're riding down the highway, you're you're almost afraid to, to look over at somebody. Afraid, afraid you might look them in the eye. They say, "Well, what's that guy looking at me about?" And he's liable to just pull out a gun and shoot you. Well, they don't have to have a reason, because why? They're insane. They're a bunch of maniacs. Well, you think a maniac's in his right mind? He don't even probably know what he's doing. And it's almost there now. That was 1965. Well, you just go over here to 2022. And you can see, and he said it'll get worse and worse and worse. And everybody thinks, well, if, if, we, if we can just, we can, we can get a new governor, if we can get a new president, if we can get this, look at here. We've had all the new, 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 and we're worse today than we ever were. It shows that the prophecy has not going to come to pass. It shows that the prophecy has come to pass. Because he wasn't prophesying that because he wanted to. He was prophesying that because it would be the truth. And his prophecy has come to pass and it has been vindicated. But, thank God, well, God's got a bride here. And he's, could you imagine, he's taking his bride out of, he's taking his bride out of Satan's Eden, right under Satan's nose, and he don't even know it. That's how, that's how, what a smooth operator Christ is. Amen. Because he can do these things. Now, we want to start here with Christ the head. Now, we found out by the reading over there in Ephesians 5 that Christ is the head of the church, okay? 
Now, and I had, when I was thinking about, and the reason I'm, I thought about this, and you wonder sometimes, well, why? Because every time, I don't know how it is, another, but it's probably the same way in other countries, but every time in this country, uh, they ask the man and the wife, and especially they ask the man, well, uh, how, 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 uh, how have you been able to stay together all these years? And the man, nine times out of ten, he'll say, oh, a happy wife is a happy life. Well, yeah, it is. Because if you've got an unhappy wife, you, you, you're in trouble. Because you have to live there. What the Bible say about a, a brawling woman? Yeah. But anyway, so I was thinking to myself, well, why can't the, the man be happy too? So is he happy because she's happy? Well, if he is, that's great. But, and they've taken that and they catered to the women when we read that he's supposed to be the one that's ruling. And that is the first thing that God revealed to me when I started to read the Bible. I found out that I was responsible for my family, not somebody else, not the preacher, me. I was, God had made me the head of the house and he expected me to be the head. Now, and he didn't give you a, 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 a book how to do it. And sometimes you blunder along at this and that and the other, but it don't make no difference. You're still moving in the right direction. Because the wife is not responsible, it is the man. And in the Old Testament, the woman... She was in the covenant because of her father. Because to be in the covenant, you had to be circumcised. Well, the woman couldn't be circumcised. The man had the foreskin to be cut off. So she couldn't be, so she come in under her father. Then when she was married, she come in under her husband. Now, you bring that from over there to over here. Now, if the woman is going to be, look here, if the woman's going to be in the covenant and she's going to be saved and so on, she's got to be under the man. And the man is Christ. She has to be under Christ. That is, he, it just said, he's the Savior of the body. He's the Savior. And so, we say, well, we had, the, we had the Father. Well, she'd come over here and she was under the Father because for a while he was manifesting himself as the Father. And then as we move along with God's progress of his word, we come to find out that you have to be the wife of Christ. Not a flirter. No, you have to be the real, genuine wife of Christ. And when you become that, you become part of Him. You and Him become one. And you are safe and secure. And there's nothing. Look here. It says over there, no man can pluck us out of his hand. That is absolutely the truth. When you get to be that, you are safe and secure. You've been sealed. But you have to get there. You have to be that. You can't be saying, well, I'm that now here flirting with everybody that comes along. And that's what's wrong with these people today. They're claiming Christ and they're flirting with everything that's contrary to Him. Huh. Now, okay, this. The man is the head of the house. And he needs to take that responsibility because when he gets there, God's not going to say, well, why didn't you do it? Well, you know, my wife, Lord, <coughs> the wife 
is not your God. But some people act like it is. Hmm. Okay. Let's read this statement here out of marriage and divorce there in Jeffersonville in 65. Now, but to get this marriage and divorce straightened out so that you would know which was right and which was wrong, now he plainly shows here in these, these types, 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 types. There was one Christ and many members of that wife. Notice, he can put us away for spiritual fornications and false doctrine anytime he wants to. Now, what can he do? He can... He's claiming you're the wife. Okay? But look here. It says that Christ... He can put us away for spiritual fornications and false doctrine. Well, I'll tell you what. There's been a lot of putting away because there is so much spiritual fornication because what? They're having relations with everything but Christ. They're claiming Christ and they got every old creed and denominational teaching and church age teaching and everything else that has not one thing to do with Christ. It's not Christ. It is actually anti-Christ. And what happens when you do that? According to what he said here, he can put us away for spiritual fornications and false doctrine anytime he wants to. But how dare you try to put him away and make it. Well, look at here. <laughs> they ain't no putting him away. And, but, but people have, and they don't even know it. Well, how did they put him away? They put the revealed word of the day and the hour. They put it away, and they're holding on to some Christ in the past, which he's not a Christ of the past. He's the Christ of now. And they don't even know it. Well, when we come to the end of the Laodicean age, they had totally put Christ, the Word, out, and He was knocking, trying to get back in. And they never let Him back in. So, the man can put away his wife and marry another one, but not the woman put away her husband and marry another one. See, all these shadows and types they are perfectly balanced. See, the original creation, not the byproduct, nowhere, not the church, the bride through the Word, not the woman, the man. Each time, that's why it never says anything against the man doing it. It's always the woman that's exactly. But now, You, you've got to remember that this is a type of Christ and His bride. Then He says all of this. And He goes on. He says, But she can be the bride of Christ by being, and remember, she being a part of the man, the Bible said, Nevertheless, I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, and then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the byproduct was deceived. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved if she continues in holiness, sobriety, and in childbearing, and in such, because then she becomes part of this man. So, with all the flaws and everything else, God is going to have him a bride, a woman, one just like he said he's going to have. Now, <clears throat> I want to give a statement here out of 
the, uh, Satan's, Satan's Eden. And it goes like this. Satan did it by the woman's lust for knowledge for sex, which she chose by her own choosing. Because when they met, there was only the serpent and the woman there in the garden. Now notice, it was Eve that led Adam to the wrong. And it was the woman who took off her clothes before Adam took off his, see? It's the woman always, it's always been, and it's still the same way. Now listen, it's the church that leads the man astray. Well, my goodness, the church is supposed to be bringing him to Christ. Well, what, what are they doing? They're bringing him to, to something's contrary. They throw Christ out and they bring him to some kind of old fables and makeup and everything else. It's the church, see? that leads the man that wanted to be a son of God. It's the woman, the church, not the Bible, God, for the, the Bible is man. Oh yeah, the Word was made flesh and He was a man. Can everybody say amen to that? John 1 and 1 and John 1, 14. The Bible is the man, the church is the woman. Now you see, where this type is coming in here. The Bible's a man, the church is a woman. He said, it isn't the church. The Bible leads a man astray. It's the church that leads him astray. It's the church that went naked, not the Bible. Because the Bible tells him he was naked. Now so you can see right here where the problem is. But do they correct it? No. Do they say, look here. You know, God's word said that he shall rule over thee. Well, you know that Satan wasn't going to, boy, he honed in on that word right there. He said, oh, no, we're not, no, we're not going to have that. And he said, that why submit yourself to your own? Oh, no, we're not going to have that because I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do just like I've done to Eve. I'm going to whisper in her ear and say, you don't have to put up with such stuff as that. Look, you're a person. You're a, you're a child of God, too. You don't have to listen to such stuff as that. And the friend said, yeah, you know, that's right. I don't have to put up with that. You know, I'm a person unto my own. I'm out here. I'm making my own living. I'm doing all this. Okay, go ahead. And you see where they are today. Now, when you get when you leave God's word, I don't care how much you think you're getting along. When you leave God's word, you are in trouble. Now. <clears throat> the choosing of a bride there in Los Angeles, 1965. Notice, she could not have one, notice, she could not have but one husband because the woman was made for man and not man for woman. The whole 500 women was just David's wife. Remember, Brother Brown talked about David had 500 wives. Okay? I don't care if he had 500. Look at here. He could have all those, and that was just his wife. It wasn't his wives. It was his wife. And he could have all 500, and she could not, they could not have one more husband. Well, why? Okay. And the whole 500 women was just David's wife. And it was a type. Okay? And look what they've done today. Brother Brown 
got the revelation of marriage and divorce right straight from God, right out of the scriptures, and they have made that message, they have tore it to shreds. There's people all across the world that are saying that he, he rubber stamped polygamy that you could have all the wives you wanted to. Well, what did they do? They took the type and took it and made it natural. And I asked the question, I don't know how many, why would, why, why would a man want more than one wife? <clears throat> and I asked this brother, it's, it's evidently rampant over there in Africa in some places because it's illegal. I, I asked this, this brother from Africa, I said, why, why do these men want all these wives? He said, well, it's like this. One of them does the cooking. One of them does the cleaning. One of them does the washing. And then one of them takes care of him. I said, well, that's not really wise. That's, that's just marrying up your help. But see, it's legal. And then they come over here in the message and try to, to, to tell us that's what's the prophet taught, which is absolutely contrary to everything in the Bible. But what do they do? <clears throat> they pull up it right now, and they say, oh yeah, that's a, that, that was a revelation that was brought out of it. Well, if they had that revelation back in the Old Testament. Well, I asked the question, I said, well, you know, you would think that if God wanted us to have more than one wife, he would have cre created more Eves at the beginning, but he didn't do that. God's perfect way is perfect. He said one man, one woman. And it is one man and one woman. It's not two women getting together. It's not two men getting together. You see how the devil takes God's word and just balls it all up? Like a fellow said a long time ago, he said, it wasn't Adam and Steve, it was Adam and Eve. But no, the devil, he ain't going to let this word. And you think if he's done just the nominal Bible that way, you think he's going to let this message along? You think he's not in this message telling, well, you know, then we got to keep this and we got to keep that. Look here, only thing you got to get to, you have to get to Christ. You ain't got to do nothing. Just get in Christ. And when you do that, it's all, it's all over. Now, who where in the world are we at here? Now, <clears throat> oh, it was just David's wife. It was a type. And when Christ sits on the throne in the millennium, well, they're looking for the millennium we are somewhere. When Christ came in 1963, He brought the millennium with Him. What is it? It's the day of the Lord. It's God's kingdom here on earth. Because the king has come. Oh, they said, oh no, He's not king yet. Well, evidently, He, he must have been. When He come, He called for His queen. And Brother Branham had the king's message. He had the king's sword. And besides that, the Bible says he's an eternal king. Uh, amen. So, when Christ sits on his throne in the millennium, his bride, the bride, all in one. So, he gathers that bride. The bride, bride, bride. Singular, bride. Many members. One, he gathers her, and she's sitting on the throne with him. But you think these people don't accept that? No, no. They got this thing all beyond her somewhere. Wherever that's at, I don't know. Now, his bride will not be one person, but it'll be tens of thousands. The bride all in one. And David had many wives as individuals, but only, but only all of them together was his wife. Like the whole body of believers is the bride of Christ. 
because she, the woman, he was the man. Now, we were made for Christ. Christ wasn't made for us. Do you see the type? Woman was made for man, not man for woman. Well, because you have to follow the type. We were made for Christ. That's what it's all about. He's going to have a wife. And he's able to pull it off. That's the way, that's what they try to do today in our textbook. Oh, yeah. He's trying to make the word, which is Christ, suit us. Instead of us trying to make ourselves suit the word. And if that ain't it, I don't know what it is. Look here. You have got to become the Word. And the Word is Christ. And look here. Once you do that, it's no more that you that lives. It's Christ that lives through you. It's all about Christ. And I don't care whose body He's using. It's still Christ. It was Christ in Moses. It was Christ in Elijah. It was Christ in Joshua. It was Christ, Christ, Christ. And it's Christ down through the church ages. It was in those messengers. And it was Christ in Brother Branham. And now it's Christ in His body. It's all about Christ. I don't know why people... Uh, now, still in this choosing of a bride. Now remember, Christ is the head. The true church of Christ, the bride, the true church of Christ, the bride, is so sold out to Him and His promised word Till the very mind that's in Christ is in you. Well, look here. If the very mind that's in Christ is in you, this body has a head to it. And we become the head because that's where the mind's at. Now this is a complete body of Christ. He said he started building it up, coming all the way up to Luther Whitley and right on up, and he come down, capstone, headstone, and boom, the body is complete. And so, if the body is complete, we have the mind of Christ. And we, <clears throat> and what a difference. And we find out today that the modern church, the modern world church, the modern world church, and also the spiritual church are both pregnated to give birth to sons. Okay? He said they're both pregnated. Well, do you think that God is, is not going to marry his wife before he has relations with her? And when that's all down through the Bible, and they're wondering when, the, when, the, when are we going to get married to Christ? Well, when's it going to happen? Or are we going to have the marriage supper up in the sky? And are we going to sit around and we're going to eat fried chicken and whatever more up there? When it's already happened right here. That God has done something. Now he said, both of these churches are, have been pregnated. Well, if Christ done the one, who done the other one? <laughs> the Antichrist. Amen? He said one of them, a denominational birth, is going to give way one day, these days, at the World Council of Churches, which will produce to the world the Antichrist through a denomination. Okay, hang on to your denomination. That's exactly the truth. I may not live to see it, but I believe I will. But you young people remember that you heard a minister say that that will finally wind up and that is the mark of the beast. Okay, so you hang on to your old denomination and your old denominational teachings and that is the mark of the beast because it is anti-Christ. 
when she forms that world council of churches, she'll give birth to her son, the Antichrist will. The world council of churches has been formed for how, how long? And the Lord knows what they're doing in the background. Some of the stuff they do it right out public. And, and the people say, well, you yeah, know, well, well, the people don't care. As long as they got a football game on Sunday or a basketball game or a baseball game or this kind of game or that kind of game, they could care less. And just, just going on. Right on through. Chelsea will give birth to the Antichrist. The other is, okay, there's two of them. The other is pregnated by the Word of God and will bring forth the body. Uh-oh. The finished body of Jesus Christ, which, now listen, which is the bride. Uh, this pregnation is going to bring forth a body, and it's going to be the finished body, which is the the bride. We are his body. Somebody asked me about the body of Christ. They said, well, is, they, they tell me that one day the body is going to drop down out of heaven. I said, it can't be. I said, he's only got one body and we are that body. And they're looking for the natural body of 2,000 years ago. And that body has gone back to the elements. But no, they ain't going to have that. Well, they say, well, Christ was in a body. Sure, he was in a body. He was in an eternal body, a theophany. The theophany is God. The same one that he was in when he met Melchizedek. Or when Abraham met Melchizedek over in Hebrews 7. He said he didn't have a father, he didn't have a mother. He didn't have a beginning of days. He didn't have a... But he was in a body. And the Bible said he was a M-A-M man. Oh, they can't stand that. But it's the truth anyway. Now. So, the other is pregnant. And she's going to bring forth the body. The finished body, which is the bride. The body of Christ isn't finished yet. How many knows that? And a man and a woman is one. And when Christ is one body the word the bride will have to be the rest of that body and the two together makes one body again like adam at the beginning man and his wife are one now she the true bride will be sold out so sold out to him that she uses no mind of her own, his mind of course and his will and his will is his Word. So you want to do the will of God? Do the Word. Well, how come if, if, they, if you want to do the will of God, you want to do the how can you do contrary to the Word? Hmm. Well, it don't make no difference. Christ is the head of His body. He's not the head of that body. The head of that body is the Antichrist. And you can tell who their leader is by what they preach and what they believe. Some of them's way down here and some of them's over here and some of them's in the middle, but every one of them's off the word. I don't care who they are. Now, still in this choosing of a bride. And then, how about God joining himself to something like that, a regular denominational prostitute? You think he would do it having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof? That he would never do it. She must have his character in her. The real, true, born-again church must have the character that was in Christ because the husband and wife are one. And how are you going to be one with Christ? And not even have his character. That just shows you're not one with him. And his character was what? Always do about the what the Father. It's my will. I have to be about the Father's business. His character.
character was, look here, whatever God says, that's, I'm not taking anything on my, it's not me that does the work, it's my Father that does the work. Oh, I want to glorify God. Because husband and wife are one. And if Jesus did only that which pleased God, kept His Word and manifested His Word, His bride will have to be the same kind of character. Keep the Word and manifest the Word. Not just all this lip service, but you got to live the sermon. you got to be the Word made manifest, the Word made flesh. That is what we are to be, and that's what the true bride of Christ is. Hmm. She could not by no means, now listen to this, she could not by no means be a denomination. Well, what if she just got a little bit of denominational teachings? Kicked out. Look here. He can put us away anytime he wants to for spiritual fornication and false doctrine. Boom! Because then, no matter how much you want to say, well, no, she is controlled by a board somewhere that tells her what to do and what she can't do, a million and many times a million miles off the true word. Now you hang on to your old denomination and those teachings. Just go right on. But look at here. He can get by without us, but we can't get by without him. Christ is the head. He said, now listen to what he says here. He said, you're going to hate me after this, but you're going to know the truth. And i tell you what, once they heard Brother Ram preach that, no doubt there was a lot of hating going on because he told the truth and he didn't pull no punches. He said, now let's compare. Here she comes up with a whole bunch of, with a whole lot of paint, something that's not even, that's something she's not, a modern bride. Wash her face and he'd run from her maybe. Scare you to death. Take all that stuff off of her. And here's a big church. Now see where he's typing this? Here comes this painted up woman and she thinks she's so beautiful with all this paint and look here, take all that stuff on you. Say, what in the world happened to her? It's the same thing with the church. And so it is with the church with a big painted front, a complete theological max, <laughs> a, a complete theological max factor. Uh huh. Both. She has a beautiful false face on them, both of them. The natural woman and the spiritual woman. They both got a false face on them. Why? Because it's all man-made. It ain't nothing to do with it. Look here. Well, they say, well, you know, that's what we went one time. We was going to Baptist church. And uh, I was only there about six months and I was able to get out. Boom! I was gone. But the, the pastor... Uh, he was probably, I guess, what was he in his middle 40s or something right there. And so one day we went to the church and they had, I don't know who done it, but they had, his hair was kind of salt and pepper gray and they had dyed his hair of a reddish brown. Remember that? And he got up there and said, well, you know, a little paint on the old barn <laughs> never hurt. I thought to myself, a preacher in the school <coughs> that, that would say such a thing as that? Well, where did that leave all the women? They could do whatever they wanted to then, and they did. And you tell them about having the long hair, and they would have slapped your face. My goodness, you get out of here, you old fogey. Something. What's wrong with you? That's old-time stuff. Yeah, that's old-time Bible truth. Yes, amen. Now, oh, yes. Uh, now, <clears throat> so both have a beautiful false face on them. Man-made beauty, 
Not God made beauty. Not much character in either one. Uh-oh. Not much character in the natural and not much character in the spiritual. Notice, just like Satan, enough to deceive by. Now, what did Satan come with Eve at? Yes, God said. I said, yeah, he did. But you know what? Let me kind of polish it, it up what God said. Let me polish it a little bit. That you'll surely not die. He loves you. You're his child. You blah, 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 blah. And she said, yeah, that's right. Let's go. Okay. That's all it took. So that's the same thing Satan comes with. He gives them enough word to mix it up with something else and make it of non-effect to the people. And you can see it don't take effect because they look just like... Mm. Okay. Now, enough to deceive by compare the modern bride now with her. Wears shorts, wears paints, cuts off her hair, wears clothes that look like men, and listen to the... <laughs> Lord, listen to a pastor that told her that it was all right. And the pastor is supposed to be leading the people. Now what did he say that leads the man away from Christ is the church. And look, somebody going there and wanting to do right and the pastor is telling him, Oh, it's okay nowadays. You know, we're a modern people. This is a modern church. Well, I'll tell you what. God is not modern. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He didn't get modern, but they did. And it shows. Terribly shows. Now, and listen to a pastor that told her it was all right. He's a deceiver. He'll suffer for it in the regions beyond. That's right. Doing that to deceive to be something that she's not. Christ is the head. Amen. And, and it's, it ain't going to change. See, I don't care who says it. I don't care how much... Uh, some psychologist comes along and says is this that everything they've said has been totally against the word of God and everything they've said and told the people to do you look at it on the street today that's a result of what they said oh they said oh you know no no you can't don't spank your child you you'll you'll, you'll you'll mess up his mind well what happened to this group Tell you what, I never saw such a incorrigible children in my whole life that it is this day. They don't no more pay attention to their parents than the man in the moon. And this is when they're two years old. And you can imagine when they get to be 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, but see, that's modern. But you know what it is? The devil always gets in everything. It said, the Bible said, spare the rod and spoil the child. And then some unbeliever comes along and almost beats the child to death. Well, he don't know nothing about that word. And then it gives the whole thing a black eye. And then they say, oh, we, we can't do that. Let me tell you, this hasn't come on my mind. This one, I was maybe, maybe, I'd say maybe eight, ten years old, somewhere right in there. Well, they had, they had dug a pond on our property, and they'd done it because they was building a road, and they wanted the dirt. So I said, we'll give you dirt. We, okay. So we had a nice little pond there. And you could go swimming in it or whatever. So one day, I was going, I was to be home, and my cousin, me and him, was going to be there, and my parents had to go off. And he said, don't you go in that pond. And I said, no doubt. I said, yes, sir. Well, it was a nice warm day, and there wasn't nobody around. And guess what? We went in that pond. And when my dad come home, and he knew that we had been in, he said, what did I tell you? Not to go in the pond. 
And man, he was so mad. I've never seen him that mad. And the thing that made him so mad that I had disobeyed his direct word. Well, he took off his belt and he worked me over and, and, and evidently while he was working on me, he got even madder. And finally, my mother said, hey, that's enough. But I'll tell you what, I never disobeyed him again because I knew he meant business. And if, if, if a natural father would do that, how much more would the heavenly father do that? Look here. When you disobey, there is consequences. I don't care where it's here. I don't care if it's in the natural law. I don't care where it's at. But that's what they've done now. Oh, you know. Oh, they didn't really know it. You know, they had they had bad rays and they was raised this way and they didn't know no better. Modern. Hmm. But yes. So you need to obey Father. Amen. Now, what did it say? He gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey Him. Amen. You think you're going to get it while you're flipping the Word off to Him? Now, okay, let's look in this invisible union. Always, if you'll watch, watch the conditions and the conduct of women. These are all types. Don't get all shook up. It's all types. And look here, there's got to be a natural because you flip it over here into the spiritual. And you say, well, how about the conduct of the men? Okay. But the man <laughs> does not represent the church. He's a sorry rascal to start with. Any man that won't adhere to the Word of God, he ain't worth two cents anyway. He's just drifting along waiting for the judgment day. That's all he's got. And he's going to get it too. Now, <clears throat> always if you'll watch the conditions, the conditions and the conduct of women, you'll see where the church is. Okay? Let's just look out here. And we see the conditions... <laughs> And, and the conduct of the women, you'll see where the church is. Oh, my! No wonder he said when he saw that vision of the bride and he saw the world church and the Asian church, and he said, oh, that filthy thing. He said, oh, my God, how could we? Yes, how could we? Mm. Filth! And he saw the American church and she come by Nothing on the top had some kind of old tattletale skirt like one of them hula skirts or something, just enough to cover her back in. And he said she was went down the road dancing to rock and roll, shaking and moving herself and all. He said, I've never seen such. That's the church. That, that look here. What do you say? I see it on the street every day. I wonder how in the world these women could get the shorts any shorter. Well, how come? Now, we see we see men all the time. Oh, that's about all you get here in Florida because it's hot. Every man you see has got a pair of cutoffs on. I guess they call them walking shorts, golf shirts, or uh, something. But you see a woman come along. They are so short, they couldn't get no shorter because of, <clears throat> there's just no way. What's the difference? It's the conduct of the woman. She's representing something. In other words, she's naked and don't know it. Just like Laodicea said. And look, it won't be long, I guarantee you. It won't be long for in these sports the women's going to take off their top and they're going to flip it off somewhere and say, if the men can do it, I can do it too. It's almost that way now. And who's going to tell her she can't? We're all one. Look here. They don't even know what, what gender they are. They don't know whether they're a man or a woman. 
And some of these women act more like a man than a man does. All you can see is some woman, she's out boxing and wrestling and carrying on. What in the world? It is a bunch of insane maniacs. And they think I'm crazy. Mm. And people, they applaud such as this. Oh yes, we're all free now. Could you imagine that? Saying that you're free, celebrating your freedom while you're in, locked up in the devil's dungeon. And you know what's going to happen. Okay, now. So, <clears throat> so, if you look at the women, you'll see where the church is. Now, this some of these remarks may seem strange to you, but it's compliment, complimentary to the message that I have from the Lord. So this message was not Brother Branham's. It was Christ that brought the message through Brother Branham. I'm trying to get this to the peoples. Now you watch everything in the natural how it's happening. Nature, and watch it, it runs sure with the spiritual also. Did you hear what he said? So this natural is running over here, and here the spiritual is, right? They're running like parallel to each other because there has to be this one to bring us over to this. And you say, what? Because God wanted it that way. That's why. People ask these questions all the time. Look here. He didn't call me up and said, how do you want to do this? I, no, no. He done it all by himself. So it runs uh, sure with the spiritual also. Now, if you'll see the conduct of women in the world today, watch the conduct of the worldly church. Look here. Running side by side. Just watch. And of course, there is also the conduct of the spiritual bride, the church. See, watch also because the natural so-called claim to be bride. Notice this character when you see women go on a rampage just doing anything they want to do. Watch. The church is doing the same thing. Okay, so you see the women go on a rampage. They, won't, they do anything they want to do. Over here, the church is on a rampage. They know no more about Christ than the man in the moon. All they got is some kind of intellectual conception of Christ, the one 2,000 years ago, which is absolutely wrong because they got him the second person of a trinity or whatever they got. He said they never had nothing right and they got all this glamour and in Hollywood and everything else, but there's no Christ. He said Hollywood shines, but he said Christ glows with humility. Yeah, they ain't got no humility. They'll tell you right quick. Look here, we got we got ten thousand members. We got twenty thousand. We got thirty thousand. So what? There's 100,000 that goes to a football game or to a soccer game. Well, they got more numbers than you then. And that, that all of them worshiping the same devil. I don't care where it's a, a bag of air or some false preacher that's pretending to be Christ. Brother Ram said the worship person in the church is Satan because they're worshiping through a creed or through some kind of old mix-up makeup claiming it to be Christ. Hmm. Now, but watch the spiritual bride. Now, uh-oh. Notice this character. When you see women going around, page, okay, we've said that. But watch when the spiritual bride, when she begins to have a revival, 
the spiritual bride is going to have a revival and it's going to be very, very, very few. When she begins to come back and line herself with the Word of God, well, look here. If you want, if you align yourself with the Word of God, you'll have to drop all that old denominational mix-up and makeup and faults and everything else, and you won't come with that kind of stuff claiming to be to be Christ the Word. No, you'll come back to the pure Word of God. And when she begins to come back and line herself up with, watch then. Watch then again. You see how the scriptures at time, there'll be a message sweep out to catch that bride, catch that woman elect. Was it? Is it? Amen. Look here. We've had, <clears throat> since Brother Brown left, 1965. Here's, here's is 2022. What's that? Uh, 57 years. And they have taken the message and they've, they've mixed a little Baptist with it because there was some Baptists come in. They mixed a little Baptist with it. They mixed a little Methodist. They, they mixed a whole bunch of Pentecostal with it. And what happened to it? It made the whole thing of non-effect. So the only way that you can get people to Christ, you have to bring them to the pure Word of God. So there'll be a message we found. And it was, and it is, for the word, for as the world, Satan, the deceiver who deceived the first bride by sinning against God, misbelieving his word. Well, you think the devil's over there in the Baptist church? He's already got them. You think he's in the in the, the rest of the churches right on down to the Pentecost and the end of the, He's already got them. No, he knows where the goods is at. He knew right if we're in the garden. He knew right where to go and did. Look here. He deceived that woman, but he won't deceive this one. Why? Because Brother Brown she is, said she is predestinated not to be. And it's not going to happen. Now, <clears throat> invisible union. So is the church. When she begins to mix creed and denomination with the Word of God, she can't be, she can't be married to a denomination and be the bride of Christ at the same time. No. What if the Scripture said your old husband has to die? So it won't happen. She's got to be dead one to the other. The law says so. There's plenty of laws in God's Word, and that's His law. Paul's speaking the same thing here. She cannot, you cannot, she cannot be married to a church of worldly creed and be the bride of Christ because she, one is contrary to the other, said, we'll believe this, but we don't believe that. Well, I hear that a lot. Well, I believe that, but I don't know about this. Okay. Well, the... The, the, the true bride of Christ said, Glory to God, I believe it all. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, I don't understand it, but glory to God, I believe it. And so I was thinking this morning, some of these things that Brother Brown said, whew, now I tell you, some of them, some of them is hard sayings, but I don't care how hard, I believe that God sent a prophet, and I believe he was with that prophet, and I believe that word that he brought was the word for us for our day. I don't care how much I, where I understand it or not, I believe it. And I was thinking to myself today, if this group here that claimed, oh, they claimed that Brother Brown's a prophet, then he said, oh, I don't know, you know. Oh, but he said this in the flesh, and he said this. But I was thinking about it, that group that claims that they believe Malachi 4 and they believe the prophet, if the group that claims that this day, if you could, could set them back 2,000 years ago and they heard Jesus Christ, except, Jesus Christ say, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you, they'd be just like the rest of them. The seven, they'd go, they'd be gone. And they say, well, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. Well, to them it was crazy. 
Did he say, oh, now wait a minute, boys, don't go. Uh, look here, uh, uh, let me explain this thing to you. He never said a word. And then he, he just piled on some extra. And they all walked away and was with him no more. But if you ever read the history on the 70, they never quit preaching. They just preached the little what little part they could believe. Yeah. And that's what these people do today. They just preach what little part they can believe. They can't take the whole thing. Okay. So when you try to mix this thing, it won't work. It just won't work. There's no mixture of this here. This is pure the Word of God. Now, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're married to Christ, Christ is the Word of God. Now, people claim they're married to Christ. Well, if you're married to Christ, you're married to the Word, and He is 100% Word. There is no creed, no nothing. It is all Word. St. John, the first chapter, said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was made flesh and dwelt among us. Christ, the living Word, He always was the Word. He's still the Word. He always will be the Word. He's the only, He was only the manifestation of the attributes of God. He was the Son of God. Now, if we're to be Christ, if He's the living Word, well, glory to God. We're the living Word. We're the Word that's living for this day just as He was the living Word. Just as Paul was the living Word. That's all that you can be because you are the Word. You're the Word made flesh and manifested on this earth. That's what you're coming to. But no, no, we no, no, that would be taking the place of Christ. Amen. That's exactly what it is. He's allowed us to take His place. What did it say? He became us so we could become Him. Well, what do you think? Become Him up in the sky or over in heaven? How about while we're down here living on this earth in Satan's Eden? Look here. Christ is walking around in Satan's Eden doing the will of God. Invisible union. Now church, oh listen to this, church across the nation, we're, the, we're following Jesus Christ the Word to be the bride. You have to be remarried to the Word of God which is Christ. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word was made flesh and dwelled among us. And as long as you hold to man's traditions of denominations, you are called in God's Word an adulteress. Why? Because you're unfaithful to Christ. As long as you're a as, <clears throat> as long as you're a denominational creed seeker belonging to a denominational church that denies the word, you are an adulteress. That's what the Bible said. And now today, let me just say this, because he said if you're a denominational creed seeker, you don't belong to Christ. But now, they used to be, they call them Baptist churches, or Methodist, or especially Pentecostal churches. And now, They've taken those names down and they've put out their message church. Well, to deceive the people. Because they've still got the same old doctrine they had. If you check the, the doctrine of these message churches against the Baptists and all the rest of these Pentecostals, well, they're, they're right in line. They're looking for Christ. They're looking for resurrection. They're looking for this. They're looking for that. Looking, looking, looking. Well, my goodness, you mean you're looking for the same thing? Some, some denomination that has not a clue what God has done or going to do? And you call yourself a message church? 
I just heard some preacher, oh, he was a big message preacher. Boy, he was ranting and raving. He was telling the people, a oh, half of you is going to miss the rapture because you're not, you're playing church and you're not on fire. Well, why ain't they on fire? You're the preacher. You're the one preaching to them. You mean you preached all this time and they're sitting there like four o'clock? Look here. You've got to have the fire to put them on fire. And the fire is the word that comes out of the mouth of God. That's like old, what Brother, Brother, Brother Brown said about Billy Graham. said he goes to these big, 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 I don't know, these big meetings and have 30,000 people. Oh, this Philip. And he said he'll have 30,000 converts. He said he comes back a few weeks later and he can't find 30. He said, what happened? Well, you know what happened. It was all some kind of an emotional deal. As soon as they left there, Christ left. But he said how different it was for Paul. He went and got one and he come back and the whole town was filled up. Why? He led them on to Christ the Word. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so don't change the name. Change it. Now, uh, I, I got I to gotta say this right here because most people don't even catch this. This is an invisible union. Now, what did he do? He opened up the seven seals of the last message. You notice that? The seven seals which all the mysteries of the seven church ages was sealed with seven seals. Did you hear what he said? He opened them up. All the mystery of the seven church ages. And he had somebody to do that. Revelations 10, 7. Now, let's see <clears throat> let's get to the very end of this which is really good we're talking about Christ the word we're talking about Christ is the head we're talking about the man was the head now Christ is the head it's type, type, type and now we're here to the anti-type to Christ being the head now listen to what he said he, because he's going to have a church without blemish, spot, wrinkle, anything else. He, the bridegroom, the bridegroom took away your shame and put it in the sea of forgetfulness by the washing of the water of the word and the blood of life. That's what the Bible said. Your first husband you were married to, the world, the anointed bridegroom which foreordained you has washed you by the washing, by the water. He said, by the church? Our congregation said, no. That don't sound right, does it? No. You might find that in the almanac, but not in God's Bible. By the washing of the water, by the word. In the word, see. <clears throat> now listen, we're getting to this place. You are standing completely justified as though you never did it at the beginning. This is my message to the church now. As we go off the air in just a minute. You're standing. If you're standing on God's Word and with God's Word, every amen, every jot, every tittle, where are you standing? I'm trying to tell you, pull away from them shucks. That's Pentecostal. They were the shucks. And get out in the wheat where you can ripen before the sun. I hear the combine coming. You're standing complete justified just like you never did it in the first place. Hallelujah. You talking about a thanksgiving, I feel good. I'm more thankful for that than anything I know of. You are the pure, virtuous, sinless, 
bride of the Son of the living God. Every man and every woman that's born of the Spirit of God and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and believes every word of God stands as though you never sinned in the first place. You are perfect. The blood of Christ, how can if a man? Oh, that spiritual union of Christ and His church now. When, when the flesh is becoming the Word and the Word is becoming flesh, manifested, vindicated, just like the Bible said would happen in, the, in this day, and it's happening day by day. Why? It's complicating so fast out there in those deserts and things taking place that I cannot keep up with it. We're near the coming of Jesus to be united with His church where the Word, be, where the word becomes a Word, the call of the Holy Spirit search in the hearts. So, God has fulfilled His Word. He said He's going to have one, and He's got one. And I'm part of that. I'm not all of it. I'm just part of that body. And I know who the head is. I know who called me. I know who He is. He's not a back yonder in history. He's not over there. He's right here living with us. Look here. This is all about the living God, the living Word. Living, living, made manifest, made flesh in the day. So we praise God that He had a way. And it, look here, it took a long time to get here, but we have arrived. We thank the Lord for that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for the Word. We thank you, Lord, that you made a way that we could become the Word. Lord, no matter what that earth birth brought us here, Lord, we know it was all in the plan of God, and Lord, you use that to manifest and project yourself, all your great attributes, but Lord, you had another one, and it was Savior, Lord, and you have proved that you are the Savior. You're the Savior of the body, Lord. We have been reunited with you, and there's nothing can ever separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Lord, how we thank you to be that. Lord, you made us that. It's not the world had nothing to do with it. It's all about what Christ has done for us. And we so greatly appreciate it. We thank you. We give you love and praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.